Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the RA podcast. But it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an RA podcast. Guys, we have a guest here today. Um, and before I introduce him, I just want to say that we are almost at 100 subscribers. Uh, we're almost at 100 episodes. We already reached 100 subscribers, but we're almost at 100 episodes. So we're going to keep going with that until we reach that. So I might be um, putting out more episodes trying to reach up to 100 episodes for you guys as well so you can go back and watch everything and um, but uh, all my links down in the description below instagram twitter facebook snapchat all like that if you want to see behind the scenes and stuff like that as well but this is not about me lads right this is about a man right here michael kane right michael right here and um michael please introduce yourself for the people that don't know who you are Hi Anthony, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so I am a 16 year old filmmaker and actor from Cork mm. and I, I'm i not really with a film club, I just do everything by myself. Yeah, because you're, you're very independent, aren't you? You're an independent filmmaker yeah. yourself. And it's crazy man that you're 16 years of age and um, because for the people that don't know, not, that don't know we're, we are going to talk about as well, but uh, you made um, a short film called COVID-19, COVID didn't you? Um, COVID era, co- yeah. sorry, COVID era. I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, COVID era. <laughs> it's okay. And um, do you want to do you want to talk a bit about that as well, describing uh, what that film is about and so? Yeah, sure. Like, go ahead. Or... Yeah, yeah. Go on, go on, go on. No yeah. Matter. So, uh, COVID era is a short film I made uh, about a month ago. I think mm. it was like the twentieth of May, mm. and I literally didn't have it planned at all. I just, I think it was like three in the afternoon, and I was a bit bored, and I was like, you know what, I can make a movie on COVID. So I just went down to the train station. Mm. and I hopped on the train and it's like a 20 minute train ride to Cork and then back so I didn't even get off the train I just stayed on Mm. and I brought my camera my tripod my I didn't bring any mics actually Mm. because I did a voiceover after yeah yeah and yeah I just hopped on the train I filmed it uh it's it's basically about like a young person who's had coronavirus and he's just talking about how his life mentally and physically unraveled Mm. and he like it's kind of he's taking a train ride and he's reflecting on what happened to him and when he got the virus mm. and did you have to do any research for that or what did you just base it off like maybe this could happen maybe that could happen did you have to do any research when uh, there was a bit of that yeah but yeah. as well because i'm half spanish i have a lot of family in spain and a few cousins who got coronavirus and a mm. few friends as well mm. so i was able to kind of like get some factual bits in there as well mm. if you get me yeah, that's that's good that you've done that because a lot of people like want to go out and do this. I'm telling you now, man, the amount of fucking COVID films that are gonna come out, literally. I know. Um, like the amount. That's of why I'm kind of like not looking forward to festival season next year because like every movie's gonna have some bit of it in there. Yeah, and, and literally, it's literally gonna be the same topic, the same subject, and yeah, hopefully the lockdown, hopefully, the isolation, the quarantine. It's just, yeah, it's yeah. literally everybody's gonna get sick of it, and I unless know. unless you do something that no one else like like with that subject or that topic, unless you do bring something to the table that no one else has, literally, it's going to be fucking hard to pick a winner because everybody's doing this exact same fucking subject. I know. I guess that's why I chose the train ride because not many people have like made movies on trains, you know, Mm. and it's quite a difficult thing to do. Mm. I'd fucking say the tripod and everything and then the trains moving. Oh, it was constantly shaking. Yeah, Yeah. and a few times it fell down as well. But I was lucky there was no one on the train. So if there were people, I wouldn't have done it. That's that's a good thing though. Uh, I think that's the good thing about COVID. If you want to go out and do a COVID film, um, yeah, you there's no one out. So uh, say if you're doing a scene out on the roads and you're just like there's and you're doing your voiceover saying no one's out, no one hasn't been out in ages. You can literally get them shots. Do you get me? And you can uh, be so much more confident as well. Like you know, you're not worried about people watching and you know. Is that is that um, when you make films and so and if you're out uh, in public, is that uh, one of your worries? About people looking. Yeah, at you, I'd say it's watching. my main worry. Just, just people looking and wondering mm. and being nosy. Like, mm. and I have to learn to kind of get over it, though. Yeah, I, th- I, I think it, the the more you'll fucking do it, the more you get over it because it just gets to a point where you're like, listen, this is what I like doing. Um, if people, are, if I'm out in public and people are looking at me, fair enough. Like, I, yeah, when we were, if I was filming. When I was filming the low ticket, people were looking at us and I was like, do you want to jump in, dear? And they'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. And they go, come on, come on. And they're like, no, no. And they'd walk away. And that's one way to deal with them. People want to watch, but they never want to be in it. Do you get me? They're that's like, a good no, thing. I might, do, I might use yeah. that. Thank you. Just say, come yeah. on. But if they go like that, oh, yeah, I'll come into it. You're like, oh, bollocks. I don't even have yeah, to. Uh, just stand extra. in the background somewhere. Just stand in the background. That's all you have to say to them. But most people will literally go, no, no, no. And you're like, oh, come on, come on, come on. And they're like, no, no, no. And they, they, they keep walking. They, they go away because you're not 
fucking yeah, yeah. I'm like, like um, I watched the lottery ticket and I saw you filmed it in a shop and you had loads of scenes outside. That must have been tough. Like, um, yeah, it was bad. Like, um, where we filmed, uh, we actually filmed outside the national lottery uh, building in yeah. town, and you know yourself, you're not allowed to. You have to get permission for all that. But I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just going to go and film my own thing. And they were, like, I uh, did that with the train. I didn't really, you know. Yeah, and did anybody walk around? Did anybody kind of was looking at you weird? Like people that were walking there, or so, or if anybody was coming around checking tickets or so, um, not at all. Kind of like, have to hide it? No? A few people. A few people that worked on the train passed. They didn't say anything. Nothing at all. No. Jesus, that's good though. But I asked. I, do you see? I researched it, and apparently, it's meant to be a public, proper, like public place. So. Yeah. I don't oh, know. so you're allowed. So you'd be allowed. You'd yeah. Be allowed to film on it. That's all right then. Fucking hell, that's a good to know now. If I ever want uh, a scene yeah. on a train, that's good. Just that uh, if there's people, it might be a bit of an issue. Like. Because mm. the, the, mo- the guests that I have on are usually in their twenties. Uh, so you're the youngest guest now I've had on. Um, oh, really? I'm pre- I'm pretty sure you're the youngest guest I've had on yet. Um, nice. But I want to, I, I, because usually when I say right, we're gonna go back to childhood, like that. But it's not so far back for you. you yeah, it's uh, a- for like that. But I want to know, Michael. Um, since s- what what age did you start getting in- interested in films and so like that, and wanted to make films? I've always like had a interest in cameras and videoing stuff, hmm. but. Like, even since I was, like, seven or eight, I was always, like, I had a camera. I I think it was, like, just one of these, like, kind of point-and-shoot ones, if you get me. Mm. And I, I I don't know, I always loved videoing everything for some mm. reason. And then I think it was when I was, like, ten, nine or ten, I, like, started editing with apps, free apps on, like, the App Store and stuff mm. on my iPod. And, uh, yeah, I just used to put little clips together and over time then I saved for a camera and I bought the camera when I was 13 mm. and I've just been making film, real films since then. Mm. Yeah, because you have a few films out at the moment. Do you want to tell people uh, what films you have now at the moment and the name of them? You could probably describe one or two of them. Yeah, so I have COVID Era, which I already described. It's mm. the COVID-19 film. And I have another one called Final Shot. It, um and that's out on YouTube as well. Yeah, that it's done really based well. on the Columbine school shootings. Yeah, mm-hmm. that done really well. Um, I remember you sending that to me, um, and I couldn't watch it at the the time I was doing something, probably cleaning the house or something. And um, I yeah. did sit down and finally watch, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, it's good. Like this is this is good. Oh, thank you, man. And you got recognition for it as well, didn't you? You got onto to a few. Yeah, that was the first kind of like time I ever f- like got kind of not like famous, but you know, mm. a bit you of, got you're like, getting known. It's recognition. It's recognition. Yeah. And I, I know for a fact that when me and my group of people, when we were making the lotto ticket, I literally turned around and said, no one knows who we are, but I guarantee it'll give us a little bit of recognition. This film. And it did. Yeah. Like I, I, it. I got to watch your behind the scenes video and I got to know like all the cast and who was involved. And it was really nice. Like, yeah, and it, and and I'd I'd have to thank uh, Craig for doing that because he knew how to set up and do the lights properly and stuff. But yeah, I was supposed to film the next film called The Hitman, and um, we we're supposed to do auditions in April, and then all this fucking hit. So I was like, shit. Oh. But I was telling people, I told my group of guys from the lotto ticket, I guarantee you, people would want to come on after watching it, and they'd want to fil- did want to be in the next film. And when we had auditions, about 50, 60 people. We're Whoa. on the list to audition. That's crazy. Like. So we we wanted to have um, a hotel, and we were going to book a hotel. We went over, checked the rooms. We looked at the rooms. We were going to book it. We'd all put like twenty euro together, twenty five euro, and it's still cheap. Do you get me? And we had it for the whole day. We went over. and goes right. We have it. Um, we didn't pay a deposit, and um, we didn't say you have to pay a deposit just yet. But thank God we didn't um, pay the deposit or anything. But um, yeah, it was it was fucking mad. And when do you when do you think you do short films? So I want to I wanted to ask you as well uh, at some point when you came on. When do you think you're going to do your first feature film? I have no idea. I haven't planned it yet. No, I'd love no. to do a movie like um, the Blair Witch Project, where it's just someone in something really simple, like the way they were holding a camcorder, mm. and it's a it's a feature film. But like the whole time, there's still a bit of a story to it. I want to do something very kind of different like that. Yeah, and the likes of have you even have you even started like have you even sat down and talked on right like kind of making up ideas of a, a feature film or are you just focusing on the actually, short films? I, like I, I, it's not something that I've thought of. Just yeah. short films, short film. Uh, and do you, do you, when you're when you're planning a short film, um, how much planning goes into it? 
not a lot. I'm not very lot. much a person who just goes and like makes it up as, as you go along. Like good COVID era wasn't even planned. Yeah, good this, there man. was no script. There was nothing like. I think when you, I think the more stuff you start planning out and doing, yes, it's more professional. Yes, you'll get them shots if you're working with a team. But as the likes of yourself, you're an independent filmmaker, so you know what you want and you know what you're looking for. So, like, I usually you, do have a main idea. I just don't plan every little um, thing. If you get me, yeah, because you you could plan it, and then when you go to do it, another shot or another idea could come into mind that's even better than what you were going to plan yeah. with for the likes of that. And I think that's good. That's that that's. Um, that's really good for your creativity as well, and um, how you're gonna. And it's way it. more exciting as well to take the risk and not know what's gonna happen. And then when you're when you're editing it as well, you're literally like, "Oh, this is so much better than I fucking thought yeah. it's gonna be," and you get so excited. And you sit you there. Do, and do yeah. you like editing? Do you like do you like sitting down and editing your videos? Uh, to some extent, yeah. But yeah. like when it's other people's videos, like because mm. I do a lot of promo work and for clients, mm. it's not as exciting. But like no. when it's my own films, I love it. Mm. Yeah, because I, I was literally gonna I was gonna fucking swing into that as well because um I seen that you've done a few promotion videos for people for like uh, fitness as well the likes of that I remember seeing the fitness one as well and then there was one where there was a girl and she was sitting down um I think in her sitting room she I think she had like blonde hair or so but I I, I can't remember um, oh, um that was that. the darkness was into light promo yeah. campaign and yeah what was that look what was it like filming that what like knowing that right this is I'm a I'm the director of this. I know this certain shots and what do you want to do. It was class. They it gave me like a really a sense of power because they like I know a few people in darkness in, in Pieta House and they reached out to me and about videos and stuff. Mm. And what we did was we got well known people, like kind of famous people of Cork, mm. and we were going to interview all of them. But we only got them to two interviews, I think, because we were going to interview Roy Keane and Sonia Sullivan as well. It was I was so excited. But obviously, because of COVID, it just all got cancelled. Didn't happen. And it's good so, that you have a team like that behind you, they're like PA House, because then yeah. other people could get them people to do that. Do you get me? They could. Oh, okay, I mean, yeah. It'd be very hard for the likes of me or yourself um, to go out there and try to get a yeah. really fucking well-known person. Do you get me? But but they, lately, it's just everybody's been like, I haven't reached out to much people. It's just people coming to me, and it's a bit overwhelming. That's good though. Know? That's good. Yeah. You have people come to you. I don't fucking, I don't have people come to me. I'm literally trying to reach out to people. So the fact that people are coming out to you and literally saying, oh, Michael, uh, would you like to do this for me like that? Because all your work and all your projects that you're building up and you're only fucking 16 as well. So imagine you made the projects you have and you're already getting people to come up to you as well. That's fucking, yeah. that's good. Like, that's great. Do you get me? That's fucking brilliant at 16 years of age. And I want to ask as well as that, I seen that you were in the paper for the COVID uh, film and that it said something about Amazon. What was, what was it about Amazon? Yeah, it, it got picked up by the platform. Like, I've managed to get it on there. What the fuck? Like, what, what the actual fuck, Michael? Like, did you, did you... When you were making this film, obviously you said you didn't, weren't planning that much or you weren't doing so much as well. That's, that's why I'm so, like, kind of shocked. I, it still hasn't hit me because nothing was... None of this was planned. I didn't plan it on being such a hit, like. So and imagine, now all of a sudden, it's on the platform, like. Imagine, right? So you done that film, and you didn't put much of a plan in or anything together. Imagine if you sat down and actually fucking planned a fucking shot. Like if you sat down and planned a shot film from, yeah, like, like from a start to finish. Book. Like and you literally put all your fucking time and I'm not saying that you don't, but like all your fucking time and effort that you're fucking knackered after doing these. Yeah, kind like of the sessions. traditional way. Yeah. yeah, literally. Imagine doing that and producing something. Maybe on Netflix. <laughs> imagine imagine how good it'd be like imagine how much more recognition you could get from from that just if you know that you put your heart and soul into it. Do you get yeah. Me? So, I, I get you, yeah. But but that's that's not your style. Your style is literally fuck it, go out with a camera. I have an idea. And I'm yeah, that's 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 what I love. Yeah, yeah. And I I saw the other one as well. I think it was Illusion, isn't it called Illusion? Yeah, that's when I had done. I think I filmed it like last year. Yeah, yeah. And what what was the kind of process through that as well? That was more like experimental. Um, I actually filmed like it wasn't even meant to be one short. It was different scenes that I filmed throughout the year, and I managed to merge them together to create a storyline. I think it was uh, this guy, he like gets a, a delivery, like a package from somewhere and it's meant to bring like a haunted spirit to the house. Mm, that's fucking, it's mad, man. <laughs> I, I was watching it. I liked it as well. I like the shots as well that you do in it also. Yeah, and, I don't really like it anymore because it's kind of no? my like older stuff. So I, I can't watch it. You'll, you'll, come here, you'll fucking, 
you'll look back at the COVID thing one day even and you'll go, what the fuck, I could have done that. I it's know, that's what better. I'm worried about now. <laughs> but it's all right, that's how you know you're progressing. A month, a month later, I'm looking back at it and I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> yeah, you, you know that's progress though. You know that when you go off and do other videos and then you look back at old videos and go, fucking hell, I could have done this better, that better, I could have done that. Yeah, maybe a little bit time I can't even watch one of my videos. I just, that, that, no? that's the only thing that I think of. Yeah, well, that that's... That's good in a way that you can't um, watch every... I can't watch back any of my videos. I don't watch back... The only podcast I've watched back was um, was me, Francesca, and Kevin Green. That was the only oh, right. podcast. And then me and my friend Marcus. They're the only podcast I've watched back since I started doing this because I can't watch myself. And the way you were saying there was, well, you can't watch your own work. Do you get me? And it's, it's yeah, it, weird it is about really it, isn't tough. it? And I, yeah, I suppose if you're a singer as well, it must be tough hearing your own song on the radio. Fuck. Or, or fucking listening or if you're a singer and you're doing like a video um yeah or like just a na- normal video where you just literally put it down you listen back to yourself i'd say it's hard if you have to edit or if you're just putting it together and upload it you have to listen to it back because a lot of people that are singers man are they literally doubt themselves even though they have a they really do, good yeah. fucking voice they have a really good fucking voice uh francesca is one of them she has a really good fucking voice but she doubts herself a lot when she comes to singing oh. And um, so I got to the point because I'd be like, oh, you're really good at singing and you're like your voice is really good. And she'd be like, nah, nah. And then I just got to the point going, do you know what? Can't change your mind. She'll say it one day. I just, it's so much you can say until you have to stop saying it to the person. At least she's told them. Yeah. You know what I mean? The likes of that. Um, but for the likes of that, Michael, as well, um, are you thinking of going to college um, when you're finished um, to do more film? Uh, like... I'm trying to figure that out right now. Because, um, mm. yeah, you're only fucking 16. But Yeah, I, I'm not sure what I want to do. But I mm. think film is something I'll always love. So maybe, who knows? Because mm. it could, like, you could do this. You're, you're still young, so you could do this for a few years and then go, do you know what? It was good. I could do it as a hobby sometimes inside, but I really want to get into this. And what, what would be something like if... Did you have any thoughts or anything about... Yeah, um, I've into? always wanted to be a pilot, like uh, an airline pilot. Yeah. It's like even since I was younger, like since I was like three, I was just obsessed with the idea, and I still kind of do want to be a pilot. But at the same time, I feel like if I become a pilot, there'll be that like drive to make films, and I don't know. I feel like I have Man, to make a fucking regret. film on a plane. You'd be all right. Make a film on a plane. Start vlogging on a plane, saying we're up fucking twenty five thousand feet in the air. There, you can you can do uh, videos on it. Uh, sneak your camera in there and. Yeah. film a few shots but that that's interesting that you want to be um, a pilot and was it love you said since three years of age was it was it just the plane you were fascinated with the likes of planes and stuff like that as well or was it just like the fascination of oh i can just go and fly this motherfucker and can... no actually like flying it like with the yeah. simulators and everything like i had i have everything all the simulators and stuff mm. and i i trained myself to fly some planes but like i then i developed interest in film and it was kind of i'm trying to figure that out right now mm. I I I um I think you should uh I think you should look into um trying to fly planes, man. Even if do it as a hobby, you can go and you can do the training where you can learn how to fly a helicopter. You can learn how to fly certain planes as well, and you can go to the likes of Kildare as well in County Kildare. Yeah, because I know you hate flying, right? Man, don't get me started on fucking yeah. flying. Man, don't get me started. It's just the fear of oh, it's going up. Now it's going down and you're fucked. Why? You're it's like, Once you're up in that... It's the okay. safest way to travel, isn't it? That's... Uh, come here. Before I went to Edinburgh, I'd sit there for like two or three days and the only thing I'd watch is um, planes and how safe they were. Like I'd watch fucking videos on them. Yeah, because I saw one of your vlogs and you were like... You were so scared on the takeoff. Man, I tell you now, I fucking gripping onto uh, my yeah. friend's fucking arm, and my head was down like that. And it's just, it's just the thought of me going up in that air. And once you're up there, if you fought you, if you go down, not you see, I love that survive. feeling. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. you feel free, like I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. When you're when you're up in the air and you're in the clouds, I'm literally just like that, and I'm staring out everywhere. I fucking love it. But it's literally just going up and you're looking out and you're seeing it. It's it's a it's a love hate kind of relationship with it. It's a love yeah. hate. And I've, I've never actually known. flown like a real plane. I've only flown them on a simulator, like I said. And it's not that scary. Yeah. But like when you're on a, pl- I'm never really scared on a plane. Mm. That, that's good though. That's good for. Uh, that's good a thing not to be afraid of. Uh, like that. But yet yeah. again, if you want to be a fucking pilot, 
but I feel like I'd be kind of like I love this idea of people watching my work and kind of being a bit well known so I feel like if I'm a pilot no one's gonna I'm gonna like die and that's it I was a pilot that's it but like if you're yeah, kind of someone who's listen to me right listen to me if you're a pilot right and you're getting people from A to B constantly they don't know who you are but they know that their pilot got them to A to B constantly when I when I go over somewhere and the plane lands and the captain or something comes out to say, bye now, I shake his fucking hand. I can't do any more because of this, but I shake yeah, his hand. Yeah. Thanks very much for getting here safe. There's people, trust me, there's going to, they'd be too shy or afraid to say it to you, but there's people that literally fucking go, I hope this guy gets me from A to B. And when he does, trust me, they're not going to say it to you, but they're fucking grateful. Trust me, from someone yeah. that is but they, like But they'll never know who grateful. it was. That's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. Is it is it all about here's a question. Is it all about recognition for the likes of yourself? Is it not, knowing that not, who not know who you are? Do you get me? Yeah, like I'd like to make my mark, like that people know I make a certain thing. Mm. And like to know like oh Michael makes I don't know, this kind of film and for people to just watch me for what I make. Like you know, you have a, you probably are subscribed to a bunch of YouTubers mm. and each one does their own thing. And that's the reason why you follow each one because of their own niche. Mm. So I want people to go to me, like, I don't know, for this kind of thing. And then to go for you for like the podcast. And then mm. you get me. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I get, I get you. I get you. And it's, it's, well, if you want people to remember you, um, if you want people to remember, you, it's literally the impact you have on individual. I don't give a, I, 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 when I was younger as well, I wanted the same thing. The same thing that you're talking about right, right now. I'm literally just like, man. I remember when I wanted that, and I wanted to make my own stuff. I even made my own little series and everything, and all with my friends. And we were like oh, in a little area, and all we were. It was fucking. When you look back at it, same as you. You look back and go, "What the fuck?" Yeah, the experience yeah. Well, at the, the whole time, thing. Like, yeah. yeah, it was brilliant. It must have been exciting. Um, we were, we were in my area. We were known in Sligo in a place called Tubble Curry. We were known as well. So if you go down there, people are like, "Oh, there's the guys from Dead or Alive." Like they'd be fucking. They be doing that, and um, but as I got older, I know this is kind of fucking cheesy, but um, I stopped caring about. Oh, I want to be known for this. I want to be known for um, not fame, but fucking for doing this or making films or so. It's the impact you have um with people um along the way of who you're meeting and where you're going and stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. Pilot, yeah, meeting people and yeah. networking and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's the impact you have on them because trust me, um. The way it is nowadays, if someone is bringing out a film and he said, oh, it fucking, let's just say it too, or The Last of Us too, or something, all the game developers and that and all, this game's coming out. That game is out already. I guarantee you right now, everybody's played that game now. Now do you want the next thing? Do you get me? Yeah. They don't yeah. give a fuck about the don't They don't care. They don't care about them. But like everything has its time and it goes up and then that's it. it, it you know. But if you meet people along the way and you impact how you meet them, they're going to remember you for the rest of their fucking lives. They're going to go, oh, Michael. Do you remember Michael from fucking 30 years ago, man? Oh, he's fucking sound chap. Yeah, yeah. And if they seen you just out of the blue, they they get this attraction to you. That's why I like doing podcasts is because I don't, I did, I used it. I was fucking, I always wanted to be YouTube famous. I always wanted to be, I wanted to be fucking really? famous. Oh. Everybody wanted it. I wanted everybody to know me. I wanted it. And I just learned over the fucking years. And I was literally like, do you know what? It's not, I don't, I don't want it because... I, I'd rather do this and get to know someone one on one person. Yeah, like I'm not worried about YouTube at all. Like I just use it to post my movies, mm. but I, I never really take care of like the amount of I don't know subscribers and stuff. Mm. That's that's good. That's good. Uh, and the fact that you're you're young and you you're, you're thinking like that is really good. And um, for for the likes of that. Um, but I wanna I wanna ask as well is that for the likes of the pile of stuff would you even consider looking into it and doing it just to give it a go? Of course. That's why I'm like so confused as to what I'm going to do because mm. I already went to the school like, and we, we like, we had a look at the plans and everything. And like, I, I had my mind set on that. Mm. But then I just started making movies and it's kind of, it's kind of leaning towards the movie side now. Oh, so maybe that's, maybe that's what you just continue to do until maybe one day. I just feel might... like if I make movies full time, I'll miss, I feel like there's a space in aviation for me. But if I do piloting, then I feel like in movies, there'll be, I don't know. You can always go, like make them. you can always go make a film like literally. And because you know how to do it and what to do, you can always go do that. Pil piloting 
it's very fucking hard i'd say and you have to go through so much shit to do it it's hard work so yeah um you're still young so make it make your fucking i know some guy that i used to work with and he is now trying to be a pilot and he literally goes up uh, and fucking flies planes he's not like i mean he's he's doing it over the years and stuff and he fucking loves it he loves doing it but he's mad yeah I, like i love flying the simulators and the thrill of it it's cool it's really relaxing so. I've, I've never ever done that do you ever do the i know this is kind of shifting off from that but do you ever do the simulator of um i remember i went to the plown championships i think it was last year um and i done a simulator where i put the the fucking headset on and the virtual was, reality thing, yeah the yeah. virtual reality and i was sitting there and it was um a drinking awareness and it's you oh. sitting down with your friend now now it's it's mad i don't drink don't smoke don't do nothing right so i wouldn't be in that fucking situation but i could have a friend that might do that so i'm sitting down i'm sitting in a chair and you have your headphones on as well and you have that so you can't hear everybody around you and it's basically you're sitting down and there's a there's a bear on the table and it's like hey, do you want to know a bear and it's like nah and you don't drive or you your friend drives and he has a bear and he goes in so basically they're on this road real dark road the only thing that's lighting up the road is the lights of the car next of all boom you hear something and then it goes black it comes back but the way they filmed it the way they shot it was fucking brilliant i literally was sitting there my hands started sweating like because you know what oh. you get into when your brain can think oh, yeah i literally done this so the car was all cracked you couldn't see anything all here the window was busted you couldn't see nothing you could see smoke and it felt literally it was so real and i turned to me right um and the fellas the fellas that you looking at you like that with his eyes open and there's blood but the way they do it michael i i start going oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck like that and, I, oh, and you're, then you're definitely crying like like i was literally like, oh fuck i was fucking almost taking panic attacks and then it switches to you're in a sitting room yeah and you're watching telly and i'm like what the fuck and uh i do that and there's a girl on the phone and you look over and you order and then i look down i'm in a wheelchair and i'm paralyzed oh. what and did it, it feel like mike michael it was just weird the way your brain can make you fucking see things and think things it's yeah, fucking yeah. weird after i crazy. literally it took me a good few minutes to fucking like go like it was on your fucking simulation but it was <laughs> mad it was crazy and um the girl on the phone would would be calling our friend going i i have no life i have to take care of this fucking gob shit you know, the, the likes of that and i'm like there's people actually out there right now that are like that because of a friend yeah. or because of their stupid decisions or they're drinking, and, they're, yeah. and they're regretting things so michael literally you're fucking 16 years of age go do your films but since three fucking years of age you knew what you wanted to do so i'm that's just my advice to you is literally fucking try it man go for that pile of shit and try it you can still do your films in the meantime but i'm telling you now because if you get to a certain age and you go ah oh, shit i should have fucking tried that when i could do you get me and that's yeah yeah and and like so that that's just that's just my advice to you it's just man if i was you i'd fucking go do it you'd at least try it you've you've bought everything you've done shit on it do you get me if you weren't interested if you knew you're like nah i'm not gonna do this you wouldn't put that much time and effort into it do you get me the same as your films you wouldn't have put that much yeah. time and effort into it like so that um but do, do you know way we were talking about um because i only do this podcast for a half an hour um i want to talk about this before we end it um but with me and michael before we started we said would we do a part two and i was like no nah, i'm gonna try to get everything on you now so i'm trying to get reach 100 subscribers and 100 bloody um episodes and after 100 episodes i'm gonna get the same people on so me and you are gonna uh, have much more to talk about so i'm gonna get you back on anyway I, I, we said at the start before recording now, yeah i'll get you back and we'll talk a lot, a lot more but um i want to ask before we go into the last segment is that um you done radio interviews down in cork i want to ask what the fuck was that like because this is nothing compared to a fucking radio interview where people listen in the car and people listen when they go on the fucking walk and everything what was that like well um well i did one dublin one actually as well mm. uh uh it to me it's the same as this really like i mean i feel the same way as i did when i was going on the radio mm. uh like you just like it's just a phone call you're on the phone talking to someone but that phone, that person is a radio presenter. Hmm. Um, like, it was a bit scary doing the first few ones, but then I kind of got used to it. That's mad. 
like for someone that hasn't done fucking the radio interviews and so like that and then it's itchy ah fuck it done a few of them now now it's just yeah that that was it like i i mean the first one i did was uh corks 96 fm it was a really it's like it's a smaller one here Mm. um and then i did news talk which is in dublin Mm. i don't know if you've heard of it and yeah 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 yeah. and um i did a few others as well here in cork and Mm. i'm doing the podcast with you now so Mm. i'm telling you now and i'm i'm very fucking humble that this is nothing compared to what you're fucking doing. This is just coming on to get a little bit more, more people to fucking know you or whatever. But for them radio fucking interviews, man, that's a big fucking deal. Like, do you get me? It is a big... I know the internet, if you get on someone's uh, yoke that has a large... Like, say if, like, loads of people you got onto someone's in the, uh, podcast that was, like, a large, getting, like, hundreds and thousands of subscribers. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's what we do nowadays but the fact that you're getting on a lot of radio stations one in dublin fucking dublin and then a few out in cork not even just one or two in cork a few out in cork it's yeah like, i think there was about four or five it's, it's, it's it's mad and if, do you have any more coming up any more radio interviews coming up yeah i have one more it's a pre-recorded one this week i don't know what day yet but mm-hmm. they're gonna let me know that's in advance cool. um yeah, and I think that's it for now anyway. We'll mm. see what happens. That's because bad, it man. all happened overnight. Like, I got featured on the newspaper and then literally all the radios were on to me. That's mad. That's fucking, that's so good, man. That's so good. And I can, I can tell that you, uh, you're you ambitious about this as well. And I can tell that, um, I can see you making a feature film eventually. I can see, that's really? what I was asking it. Yeah, I can see you making a feature film. You'll you'll get that a lot of much recognition. People, you'll put out uh, ads and posts and you'll have so much behind you. Um, people will literally be like, oh, he's the guy that does all the interviews. Oh, he's the guy that was on the radio. He was the guy that done this film, that film. Yeah, I'd like to do stuff for him. I'd like to do that. And you might get a following behind you and the people that you've worked with as well. And you have, if you need to do, uh, if you're doing a feature film, you needed a gym, you, ha- you fucking help someone with a gym, they might help you out. You had yeah. people that fucking PA the house, they might help you out. After this uh, podcast, I'm going to send you, I have a short film coming out that we filmed December last year. I'm not bringing it out until this December. I'll send it to you and see what you think about it. I just want to... Nice. I'll have it. Yeah, I'll watch it. No one's seen it, so you'll be the first person, I think. Oh, okay. class. So I'll, I'll send it to you and just let me know. And you, be, uh, do you know I mean? Be honest. Uh, I don't like... Well, I'm not like an there. expert at all. Like, I'm just... I, it's a hobby of mine, like... I know, but... You've done... You're doing it. Do you get me? Like, people go, oh, I'm not an expert, but yeah, but you're you're not an amateur either. You're not. You're not a beginner either you've done yeah but like to me an amateur is just someone who's making their first movie Mm. yeah yeah i think you're right um right so you you wouldn't be an amateur you'd be more intermediate like i'm a fucking gob yeah i know i'm gob um we're we're gonna get into the last subject uh last topic now um and i just want to say again we will get you back on i'll get you back we will like have a fucking team we i'll get you back on and um after a hundred episodes, and we'll we'll sort it out. And we'll we'll do that as well. Perfect. We'll, we'll do something with Francesca. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll do something. We'll get her on. See what she'd be up for coming on if she's not um working or busy or something like that as well. Um. But yeah, guys, we're getting to the last subject now of this podcast, and you guys know what it is by now, guys. This is ghost stories. Oh, scary. Right. So, Michael, this is my favorite part of the. Pod- I like getting to know people, but this is one of my favorite parts. Very interesting. Uh, two questions for you. One. Do you believe in afterlife? And if so, what's your kind of belief system on that? And two, do you have any ghost stories you can tell? Or do you know if someone ever told you a ghost story that kind of freaked you out? That you were like, was that real or not? But it kind of freaked you out. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. I, I should have prepared that. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't tell anybody. I don't tell yeah, anybody. Um, okay. So afterlife. Yeah. I, I mean... I believe in reincarnation. If that's if that means no, that's anything. good. Yeah, a lot of people said because that. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on like people who were like, um, I, like I've heard the one of Anne Frank where this kid in I don't know what country it was, but he knew all the details of like Anne Frank and where she lived and the exact details. And he was only like three years old, um, fuck? and he took the parents to the house, the older house, and he was like telling them stuff that only she would know. So I mean, maybe it's true. Who knows? Mm. Maybe it's a hoax. There's a, and then, there's a, yeah, yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry. Yeah, and then, oh yeah, and then ghost stories. Um, God, I'm trying to think. Maybe like, God, I'm trying to think. It's. Mm. 
I it do have like one. Michael actually. has a lot. Like, yeah, like Michael has a lot. Like I do have one where um, it's I know someone who was driving right. Yeah, and she this this park it used to be like built by these workers back in the 1900s but a lot of people died when it was being built mm. it's like a zoo and she was driving and she said that she stopped and this man was walking across but then like like she i don't know what happened she looked away and then he was just not there anymore what the fuck yeah so i don't know maybe she was dreaming or imagine, something but imagine she was driving then literally he's walking by and then she turns her head yeah. looks back and he's like legging yeah. it across the road and he yeah. just falls and falls into a ditch but apparently he was like an old man wearing like white clothes i don't know maybe it's fake oh, I don't know. that's fucking mad that's but weird. because a lot of people died making that place then maybe it's real and um, back in back in them days as well um yeah from the clothes that you're describing and with the likes of reincarnation um a lot of people were said that on the podcast as well. They they like that. A lot of people are like, no, I don't believe that. When you die, you die. You're dead. I'm like, right, fair enough. And I I I'd like to think that there is somewhere else, or you do come back. Um, but um, I I literally asked this person a few podcasts ago. I was like, um, they were like, what do you think about it? And I goes, well, honestly, me. I goes, I'd like to think that, but what was what was it like? What what can you remember before all this? I was like, nothing. I can't remember anything. It's like exactly, you can't remember nothing. Like yeah, exactly. I can't remember anything either. Yeah, so no, one, no. But there's one kids that like three years of age. They remember things. So yeah. I don't know. there was um there was this kid and he was in his bath and he was only three or four. It's always fucking real young. Yeah, it's never like I'm ten. It's like right, you're mad. We're bringing you to the fucking hospital. <laughs> you're mad. But um, there was this kid and he starts saying um, when's daddy coming back? And he's like, Daddy's Daddy's in the yoke. And he goes, No, where, when are we going back to our real house? And he goes, What what real house? It's like our house, our house in the woods. And he's like, What house in the woods? And he said that the kid was like only four. And yeah, about yeah, about three or four or something. About four. Um and the kid was like, um, we go back to the wooden house in the the woods and we get in the bat. This is not my bat. Where's my bat? Like that. And he was like glitchy. But when he got older, I was like, do you remember saying that kind of stuff? He's like, no, I don't remember saying nothing like that. But the ma was saying um, that um, he was talking about a wooden bat and that um, they lived in the woods. And that child has never gone to the woods before in his life. The kid has never, you know, never went to a forest or nothing like that as well. Yeah. He was young, he didn't do it. And she was like, I don't even know how, What I, didn't even, I don't even know how um, or what and made him think that. I don't know how he even was able to describe that. And I just found it fascinating that uh, like a three or four year old um, was that she able to, as you said earlier, describe little details saying like they had a wood, where's the wooden bat and, do you know what I mean? The bat and this is not, yeah, yeah. it's just a bit freaky. Like it's a bit weird. Um, it is, yeah. Yeah, but it's a bit weird. But is um, that ghost story is like that. Have you ever experienced anything that um, you couldn't explain that you were like, oh, that's not really, I'd love to. Like I, I've done a few like, rituals with my friends but like Fuck. we've never the bloody mary thing but we haven't yeah. really seen anything and i'd love to try the board do you ever try the board don't oh like the ouija board yeah. thing yeah. ouija or whatever it's called i call it luigi after fucking mary <laughs> i call it luigi but that's why i wasn't saying it and um, yeah but the board i'm calling it the board have you ever done the board have you ever no tried? i've never where do you even get the board you can make them you can oh. fucking make them you can buy them in shops but the difference is people uh go and do it but there's a certain, they say it's a certain way where you have to get candles and you have to say this fucking thing. And Yeah, like a, a, in like Latin or something, yeah, some weird have, language. You have to say something and then that'll happen um, for, for the likes of that. But that, that that's all right that um, a lot of people don't have ghost stories inside that. But so I, I have um, a second thing to ask if, um, if they don't really have ghost stories or if they never experience them. So out of these three films, these three Irish films, let me know which one if you've seen them, which one do you think is the your favorite one out of all of them? The Commitments, The Snapper, or The Van? Have you ever seen any of them? I've never seen any of them. Oh, my God. Michael, are they after this fucking podcast... Are they fucking famous? My, Michael, after this podcast, if if you're like, right, I want to watch a film, I'd advise you, for Irish films, that it's real, that Dublin films as well, um... I thought you were going to gonna say something like Michael Collins or in the name of the father or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you've seen them, have you? Have you seen them films? Yeah, have I've you seen, seen a lot of them. So, have you seen The General? No. Oh, that's a really good film as well, Michael. 
Oh my god, I haven't seen it. <laughs> in in the name of the father is really good. That's probably one. Of, that's that's a film that I could go back and watch every. Yeah, it's one of my time. favorites. Yeah, it's it's a really good film. Um, and what was the other one you said? Sorry, uh, name of father and what? Michael Collins. I don't really like that film that much. Yeah, so. I I'd boring. watch it, but I would be mad on it. Um, I would. Yeah. Be mad on it. But in the name of the father, now I'd be fucking. I'd watch that at least once a week. Like I would. I'd, <laughs> I'd watch. Go back and watch it. I remember I used to. I used to go up to this girl, and every time we went up to our house, um. I'd have in the name of the father pre-recorded, and if she went off and did oh. dumb stuff in our house or clean, I'd literally turn it on every time, like, and I'd just watch. How it. many and times was that? Like a week? Ah, man, I'd go about two, three times a week, so I'd watch. You turn watch it on every. Oh. I, I'd like I'd watch it about once, once every week or something. But they'd come in, the mad come in, or she'd come in. She go, Are "You watching that fucking film?" Yeah. And I'm like, "This film deadly, man. You don't even fucking know. This film's so good." Like, um, but if I was you, man, I'd. I'd watch The Snapper first because that's my favorite one. Okay. A lot of people that I got on about this, um, on this, I asked them and they uh, said the commitments and the commitments were a band, an Irish band and um, they had all these people and they formed a band together and they started playing. They got a bit famous from it. Um, but this, the music in it is fucking brilliant. The way the chemistry of the characters, the way they play, bounce off each other is brilliant. It's pure yeah. Irish and it's pure Dublin. And if you want to know, obviously you know what Dublin people are like, but if you want to know like a range of Dublin ple- people all in one, literally watch these films. Colin Meany, that's his name, isn't it? Colin Meany. Um, he, he's in uh, The Snapper, he's in The Van, and he's in The Commitments as well. And he's, right. he's, he's fucking brilliant. He's the dar in them also. And The Van is more about him. The Snapper, he's in it a little bit, and The Commitments, he's only in it a little bit. But it's, it's brilliant, Michael. I, I think you I'll have to fucking, check that out, yeah. It's fucking, you'd be you'd be pissing yourself laughing. It's so Are they funny. older films or like? Um, yeah, that they come out probably 90s maybe or so, but um, they're really fucking funny. Um, a lot of people don't like Irish films, but I like Irish films because I can relate to them so much. Yeah. Of, I, I we like all have that neighbour. Yeah, we all have that yeah. neighbour. We all have that cousin. We all have that friend. And literally you're watching and you go, oh Jesus, that reminds me of him. That reminds me of her. To get me, that's yeah. why I like it. Um, for likes, and it brings back memories as well if it's a certain situation or so but um, yeah Michael fucking these podcasts are half an hour usually we went over the half an hour but it's alright fuck it sometimes I do it um, that means for people that I've done a podcast with already and we're just on a half an hour don't get offended but it means that I got lost in track of time and I just I'm enjoying it do you get me the likes of that um, I definitely will get you back on um, but, perfect um, please um, for the people that are watching now um, where can they find you? They can find me on YouTube at Michael K Films and on Instagram on Michael K Films as well. Right, so I'm going to leave them links down in the description below. And, yeah, um, perfect. And, and people, please go check him out. Subscribe, watch his videos, and go on to his Instagram, follow him on Instagram. So any behind the scenes, any projects that he's has coming out, you can fucking everybody will see it as well. Um, yeah, you better send me that video as well. From December, I will. No, I, I will. Yeah. The minute I finish this, I'm gonna go and I'll send it to your email. I'll okay. send it on WeTransfer if it fucking allows me because I don't know how much gigs it is. But if it's not, I'll send it through Google Drive or something. You can. Or you can do a, a private unlisted link on YouTube. I'll, I'll even yeah, I'll even do that. I'll upload it and I'll private and I'll send it to you. Um, yeah. Because um, I just, I'll get your fucking get your um opinions on it. The likes of that. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, Michael, thanks very much for coming on, man. Thank you so much and for having me, Anthony. Because um, the, first, the first time I ever seen Michael, we were actually talking on Instagram. And then I went to this thing in town where it's like extra. Yeah, work. the casting and day. Out of, out of nowhere, out of fucking nowhere, I just looked to me left and Michael's coming up and I'm like, I know him, man. Well, not known, but I know I didn't him, recognize man. you. I didn't see you at all, though. Yeah, That's I was the like, thing. And then you know. just said, hi, Michael. I was like, whoa. I was just like, all right, Michael. And you're like, oh hello Anthony and then we just we walked by and then uh, my friends that I was with James and Sarah they're like do you know him and I was like I know of him he makes films you should watch them they're deadly man because my mate James fucking loves um, on them short films as well um, but I was going to tell that story at the start but I got fucking lost in what you were talking about and so, yeah I couldn't believe it when I saw you I was like whoa that's um, Anthony O'Reilly yeah I was like what's the story man what's up um, but yeah. um, before we go I I'm supposed to sign off now, but I want to keep talking a little bit more. What that line that you had to wait in, that fucking line that you had to wait. Oh in, my god! How long did that take? Like I want to know. Oh, I went to the very end, and it was it was like the you know the way the street was. It was like mm. blocks, or I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, it was literally like that. Yeah, like, and it was uh, fucking, it was dead. Yeah. So we got there at like, I think it was like half eight or something. And mm. the queue was already way down, like way, way down mm. by the spire. Um, and we were just waiting. And I think the queue, I think we were in the queue for like about an hour, maybe. Fuck. And the, how the long were you only, for? I, right. My friend James and Sarah were there already. So I was trying to find them, but they were literally where you met me. That's where they were. And oh. I walked, so I walked, I walked down and I got the bus in, I went down and I literally was lo- looking for them and I couldn't find them. And then all I seen was James big head. If James is watching this, James has a big head. And I was like, I was like, all right, James. He was like, all right. And I walked over and I got in beside him. Cause you know, if you have friends, you can fucking go into the line. Yeah. 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 And I, and I went in and James literally showed up. What are you doing? You need to go to the back of the line. I don't even know you. Like Jody, he was he was yeah, saying yeah. I was like, don't mind him. He's my he's my friend. Like I, I had to fucking assure people that I was fucking with him and Sarah, his friends uh, his girlfriend Sarah was laughing as well. Uh, but thank God they were there and I caught them before they, they went in because I was only waiting there for about ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Oh you're so lucky. We were there for a good hour, like and pe- more and more people came. And I saw some people had like Viking costumes and everything. I was like, Yeah. Why? It's people. a costume. It's like yeah, and the fucking beards, and beards, the, yeah, that fucking like long hair. People, yeah. They're the type of people that are gonna fucking get it. Um, but I just went in just to say fuck. It, I'll do it. Like um, might as well. Um, but did you get any email or anything? Got nothing. Got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. Did you get any? No, I got fucking nothing. Um, it was it was an experience in itself to see how it's run, how it's gone, and how much effort goes into it. Yeah. Um, but the minute you go in there, man, it's about five minutes in and out. I was I was yeah, out there, was so I was out there in about two minutes. And yeah, we filled in the thing. They took a photo, and that was it. And you're like, what? And then you're like, anything else? And it's like, no. It's like I waited over an hour, and it's like, it was yeah, the amount of people. Um, but yeah, I wanted to bring that up at the start, but I didn't get the man. Yeah. I can't I believe fucking... we met in person. Like it's scary because everything happens so quickly. Like you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I I saw I I saw your stuff, and then we start um we had each other on Instagram. Yeah, and Facebook. And Facebook. And I, I buy that. And then I was like, oh, and then you sent me a video of it was literally the skill shooting. That was the first thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was, I was, because uh, I, I was remember like, seeing the lotto ticket as well. Mm, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, and then I was like, oh, this is fucking deadly. And I, I remember um, my girlfriend at the time, we were sitting down. I even got her to watch it. And um, oh, class. She, she was like, that's good. And I goes, yeah, he's fucking, he's like 16 or something. And uh, she goes, what? And I was, yeah, and he's making stuff like that. And I just, I want to say to you, um, face to face, this is like a face to face that, man, yeah, just keep course. fucking, keep doing what you're doing because whatever you're doing is working. I hope. Fucking good. Yeah. And fucking Amazon. Fucking Amazon, Michael. Amazon. You're fucking yeah, I know. Amazon. What the fuck? That's so much more recognition, man. That's fucking great. And yeah, I know, I know Thank that you. you, I know that you want to do your films. I know now that you want to be a pilot, but fucking, don't even don't even listen to me when I say oh, I go do your, your pile of shit and all. You do you, man, and you keep doing what you're fucking doing and just go whatever you want to do. Because in the end of it, whatever you pick, you're gonna fucking love doing anyway. Between them, thank two, you so the much. Yeah. Are passion. Do you know what I mean like that? And I can't wait to have you back on, man. Um, the, oh, it'll be great. Yeah, it'll be fucking class. I'm um, looking forward to it. We'll, we'll stay on longer as well. Yeah, we will. We'll stay on. We'll fucking. I was thinking of getting. Um, I was thinking after 100 episodes or four. Actually, do you know what? I might as well say this now. Um, this is uh, the first time I'm going to say this on this if people are watching. For the 100 episode, I was thinking of getting a few people on at once. Joe, like about 10 people. And we're, I know oh, it could yeah, be a, thing, yeah. but like a reunion I'll, kind of thing. I'll, 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 I'll put you on. You'll be one of them. So you're Oh, gonna, class. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really you'll be appreciate on the 100. And we'll talk about because I'm gonna get different people. So I'm gonna get people for film. I'm gonna get people that are dancers. I'm gonna get people that are singers. I'm not gonna get like all films. I'm gonna get kind people. of like the Graham Norton show where he has a bunch of guests. Literally, next to each other. yeah. Literally, they do different things, and it people will bounce off each other and ask each other questions. I know it would be a bit fucking mad that everybody be talking at once, but we'll try to fucking sort it out. Yeah. If anybody, if you can be like the host, then keep yeah. everyone where they and should I, be. Like, I literally should just be like, like, shut the fuck up. Like, like shut yeah. up. Yeah, shut up, let him speak. Yeah, like that. It'd be a bit, uh, be a bit of chaos, but we alright. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, guys. Yeah, as I said already, links down in the description below. Please go follow me for behind the scenes. Also, Michael as well. Please go check out his films. Please go check out. Thank you his so Instagram much. Instagram and stuff like that as well. It's been a pleasure, Michael. Thanks very much for coming on, man. Thank you so much um, for having me on. And remember, guys. Remember, it's not the best podcast.
was not the worst podcast. Oh. It's just an RA podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, peace. <laughs>